My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this afternoon or this morning. I should say, yeah. go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Absolutely. Hey, guys. I'm Rachel B. Foy. I'm a best-selling author, life strategist. I am from Texas, the Houston, Texas area, and I'm known as America's favorite quitter. So that's me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And, and you actually and you actually have a podcast that's named after that, correct? Absolutely. I quit podcast with Rachel B. Ford. We are all things I quit. <laughs> so here is here's here's my question. You had a post on your IG thanking all the teachers. Mm -hmm. Is that because yes. you have a lot of teachers in your family? Did you used to teach yourself? What was that all about? It's a combination of both. So I am actually a former educator. I, my husband comes from a lineage of educators. He is still currently in education. He teaches in special education and he's a coach. So when I say educators are near and dear to my heart, not only because I was in the profession, but because I'm surrounded by people who are educators and who are educating our kids for the next world, you know, for going forward. So absolutely, I was an educator. I still consider myself an educator, just not in the classroom, the traditional sense, but absolutely, yeah. So here is my question. Would okay. you agree in the self-development realm and uh, space? Mm -hmm. I don't see as much as teachers as I would like to. So my mm -hmm. challenge, is, mm -hmm. is why more teachers or educators in a traditional schooling mm -hmm. system, why mm -hmm. are they not getting exposed to the self-development? Because you would think that they have a lot more exposure to our younger generation where they could potentially affect the, the, the it, it will have a domino effect for mm -hmm. hundreds of years to come because right. now they're dealing with a kind of uh, clean slate. They haven't gone to the real world where they mm -hmm. would get a lot of garbages and things that right. are not useful that we could mm -hmm. impact them. So I'm cool with educators. I have educators around me a lot too. But sometimes right. I just like to get on their cases. I don't know. I'm like, mm -hmm. can they do more? Should they do more? Should mm -hmm. we, can we hold them to a higher standard? But then I look at their salary and it's like nothing. So I can't even get on their case. I can't yeah. even say we're paying you and you're obligated to do this because we're not paying them. Enough. So I don't know. What do you think? Well, so let me say it like this. That's a great question. And I really think the first thing that we have to understand is whenever you are looking at media, what have you, very rarely are the most phenomenal and amazing things highlighted. We both know drama is what sells. Oh, so bad what news I, sells. Bad news yeah, is commercial. Absolutely. Bad news is money. Yes. And so, but the truth and the reality is, I am not an exception as an educator. Any parent that has had to homeschool their kids can tell you they have a brand new respect for what educators have to do because the truth is, you are basically in that classroom during the school year. Oftentimes, that student is going to be in the company of the educator more hours during the day than they are with their parents because they're typically in school like eight hours a day. So you have the kids there, but understand we have to be counselors. We have to be able to impact the students because the truth of the matter is before we can ever get to the content and we can educate the kids with the academics, we have to meet them where they are emotionally. If we don't ever address their social and emotional, we're not going to be able to get to the academics. And what I mean get to the academics, they aren't going to absorb it. If we have kids that are concerned and worried about, am I going to eat? I couldn't do my homework because my lights were off last night. They come to school and we do not understand how much kids deal with. So you're right. Educators need a raise. Number one, let me put that out there. They need a raise. Okay. And it's, it's because 
the profession itself requires a person to literally do the unimaginable, which is sometimes take a student that's sitting in your classroom that cannot read on grade level and meet them where they are and then move them to where they need to be. At the same time, positively impacting them and uplifting them at the same time teaching them responsibility accountability at the same time making sure they're able to work together with different students that are in their classroom at the same time making sure they're able to respect any of the administration and the teachers that come so it's so much more than just the academics and i'm glad you brought that to light because the truth of the matter is the educators I know, they're there because they want to be. The pay is not going to keep anybody in education. They are there because they want to be there. And we are teaching kids so much more than just the academics. Truly, they come. But if you're truly a stellar educator, teacher, educator, empower, all in one, you're teaching so much more than the academic. So I don't know, Vahid, maybe you just haven't, you know, you haven't had a chance potentially to meet the amazing, you know, educators, but I would, because even parents, you know, I, I had parents myself that were like, well, what exactly are you teaching my kid? Or shouldn't they know this? And I'm like, yes, they are going to get there, but I have to hold them accountable. And sometimes it's the growth process is difficult sometimes even for the parents. Why? Because oftentimes, especially in my classroom, I believed that I was firm but fair. So it did not matter who your parents were, what your background was. It didn't matter what you did. If you got in trouble the day before, Every single day you walked through the doors of the classroom was a clean slate. And today we're focusing on today. Let's build today. Let's impact today. Let's learn today. So I think it's a combination of they just need to highlight the phenomenal teachers um, as much as they do the drama. But really, educate. there are phenomenal educators that are out there. And we do so much. I say we. <laughs> I'm still saying we um, do so much more than just teach academics. We do the no, whole listen, week. I agree, I agree with you 100% because in my life, and, you know, I feel like I'm very young, but um, mm -hmm. I had a lot of teachers over span and period of time that I was in schooling, but there were a few that I know they went beyond what they got paid for and they didn't do it because of the money. They did it to make a statement of who they were. And they wanted to have that growth. Therefore, the student growth. And i give you an example of it. Our physics teacher was building our, our website for our high school. And he was mm -hmm. literally coding HTML codes. And mm -hmm. I was designing websites just for fun. Yeah. And one day I came to the class and I see him opening up the book like like an educator he was mm -hmm. and he's looking and coding and I'm all like what are you coding and he's like I'm building the website I'm all like you could drag and drop these things and we could do that like do you not yeah. know that like I know that he's like what do you mean I was like let me show you the software I downloaded the software and back then you know it was dial up at home but it was a DSL connection at school so we, yeah. we got all of that stuff much faster so guess what I ended up doing I ended up not going to my AP computer class. I was yeah. assigned to the physics class, but it had mm -hmm. nothing to do with physics. We were putting mm -hmm. the website together and doing all, but I knew that he was really advanced in technology. Like we had a good computer. It wasn't compared yeah. to today's standard. It was nothing. But at that time it was good. Internet connection, all these different yeah. things. So he enabled me to bring out the creativity and I told him one day, I said, listen, I'm not the best guy at this either. I got a buddy of mine, you know, a friend of mine who's not taking AP computers and all that. I think we should mm -hmm. bring him on. You know, he could do yeah. some, you know, he could do some serious damage. So we brought, yeah. so I kind of recruited other students to do all this <laughs> stuff. Yes. And we right. did that. 
And it was cool. So from that time, I got involved with the technology, all of these different things. And that, mm-hmm. I think that changed a lot for me till today. So yeah. there are teachers that impact us like that. And I got to tell yeah. you, I'm very disappointed because the high school mm-hmm. next to us, they don't even have a counselor for business. Like the person retired five years ago, they haven't mm-hmm. got a replacement for the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when I went over there and I told them, listen, I could do, I could do talks for you guys for your graduating class. So maybe yeah. some of them want to go into business. I don't mind giving my two cents about it and give them mm-hmm. some tools and some books, some materials. So they, they never got back to me. Like I had a hard time mm-hmm. getting into the school and I'm like, I get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars and I'm mm-hmm. giving this shit for free. I'm literally right. telling you. Let me come do the talk for you to get right. the students at least some resources because mm-hmm. they may not have it or their parents may not even know. So right. I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I just get pissed off when I know that they could do more or they should be more. But yeah. it's not. And it's in 2020. And it just, it just, mm-hmm. um, it gets me fired up. It gets me fired up. Right. And I do think, I think too, with needing to and being able to do more, like you're absolutely right with most things, whether it's in education, whether it's in business, there's always ways that we can streamline and we can do better. So even with my book, I talk about like us being able to quit, like quit the mindset of this is the only way that things can be done. One of the greatest things that educators in the classroom and just any sort of thought leaders can do is when we allow kids but ourselves too to be able to think outside the box so i taught general educate well special education first and i taught general education i taught math and one thing is there are parts of math and it's elementary math so we allow the kids to explore for them to really be able to take the abstract concept they've learned and be able to apply it and that's where you see the beauty is when kids are allowed to dream they're allowed to be innovative and they're allowed to understand that this is the finish line like this is where we're trying to go but there's a number of different paths to be able to get there and so i just say that You know, I can't with anything, with anything, education, business, marriage, there's always going to be room to improve, okay, room to get better. But I mean, I do, I just believe that we leave them open, we give them, we give them the chance and the opportunity to think outside the box. And also when we bring in our personal experiences, you would not believe how many kids would say like you impacted my life or what you said today made me feel like I can do it. So I do want to make sure the message is understood that for every five districts that may not be doing it right, there are 50 that are given 110% to make sure those kids are getting exactly what you're talking about. (laughs) Yeah, and I want to make sure I go on record. My wife is perfect. There is no improvement to be there. I want to get that on record. My wife is perfect, and there's no improvement needed to be there. You know, I, I need to put that. So if she's watching this, I want to make sure. You, you, girl, you're going to put me in trouble. You're going to get me in trouble. I, I, there is not, my wife is perfect. And listen, my wife is like a little, uh, she's she's definitely, we're like, we come from like two different worlds. I went to public school. I went to the ghetto school. I went with all mm-hmm. the drug dealers, all the craziness. All We had mm-hmm. two cops. On the premises, not one. We had two, and I was part of the magnet. Pro- it was pretty cool, but I was in this little group with like 20, 30 nerds, and I was like, "These guys are different. Why are we studying so hard? And how are they passing? Why are they not worried? Why are they not stressing? Right? Like we're stressing, mm-hmm. we're doing this. And so anyway, I. So it has nothing to do with the environment. I think it has to do with the student and the teachers. Where you could go to public school and turn out to be okay. Now, my wife, she went to all girls Catholic school, all private school, all tier mm-hmm. talk, tier one, all that stuff. So me and her, we always go back and forth. We argue. <laughs> Most of the time I lose, but I like to say I win some of them. But uh, I yeah. think our daughter is going to get some of them in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but to me, it's like, 
to me, it's like, listen, it's not just the private school. Yes, I do believe if you can afford it, you could surround your your children with a higher sociographics. Not that they're better people. Mm-hmm. At least the limitations of money and income won't mm-hmm. be there. At least their parents, at least they have a good lifestyle so they could see what it is and they could build their own. But also at the same time, when kids have money and their parents have money, they're spoiled also too. So it's mm-hmm. like, how do you mm-hmm. balance that up? And it's, well, it's not easy. And I think too, Vahid, like it's a, there's really a combination because my kids, like there are private schools all around us and my kids go to a very small uh, public school and they go to a public school because we went to a public school. Now we have thought about putting them in a private school only because the school that they currently go to is smaller. So there are particular things I want them to be able to experience, whether it is, you know, speaking a foreign language. But what we've been able to do is supplement that for the kids. Like, but we wanted them there at that small town, that small school, because one, I'll tell you, the staff and the educators, like they're veterans there. Many of them have a graduate, a master's degree. I know one teacher I co-taught with had her PhD and she was a classroom teacher in a public school in a rural area. So I think, again, it depends on where the area is because we've had students who have moved in before from going to a private school and they were not as far along as the kids who were in my classroom. So I really do think it depends. The same thing we tell kids, depending on the hand that you're dealt, the hand you're dealt does not determine how far you're going to go or if you're not going to succeed. It's what you're going to do with it, what you're going to do with the environment. So you can set students, kids up and have them in the best environment, everything that's available to them. And if they still haven't bought into it, they don't believe they're capable of it and they don't put forth the effort, it's still for not. And so I just think, whether it's public school or whether it's private school, that there's pros and cons with both. And I know for our, the school my kids go to, like I said, we have classroom teachers that have PhDs. I had a master's and I was a classroom teacher before I got out of the classroom. So I just think it depends. But like you said, because the school was smaller, I want them to have other opportunities. But as parents, we're supplementing that by bringing in tutors or bringing in, we want them to play instruments and do piano. So we just have to be able to supplement what they're, what they're not getting there. No, totally. And, and I think that, that puts a lot of responsibility for, listen, I think as a society, back in the days, mm-hmm. we were informed. I think that is missing. We are not yeah. informed on real facts because we worry about yes. the consequence. But if we are informed about yeah. just you could look at you could look at around us so many craziness and guess what mm-hmm. all of it has to do with information and being informed right. if people That's are right. informed nobody's going to get on nobody's case because they're yes. informed. they will That's make right. better decisions and choices but when mm-hmm. we're not informed and we don't right. know where the money is going for education why mm-hmm. I, I, I was having this uh, question with one of the <laughs> ex principals and i'm like I see billions of dollars going into the system. But when you go to the school, when you go to the school that's next to me, which is not in a bad neighborhood, it's a decent mm-hmm. neighborhood. It's not a wealthy neighborhood, but it's not a poor neighborhood either. The mm-hmm. average home is about like six, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000. So it's not poor. But when you right. go inside, when you look at the facility, it looks like it was built in World War I. Like, I'm mm. like, can you guys get some upgrade? Like the fences, like it's it, it looks like a penitentiary. It looks like a right. it looks like a prison. When you mm-hmm. go inside, like it's not colorful. Mm-hmm. They got this metal detector that looks like yeah. you're literally walking into jail, right? Mm-hmm. And just the way this, I'm like, we couldn't spend five thousand dollars on a new paint job like ten years right. ago. Like right. I'm not seeing the money being spent there. So where the hell is the money going? The teachers are not getting paid. Principals are not getting paid. The schools are not. So I'm like, where the hell is the money going? Like, can I be right. informed? Can I know as a citizen? 
I'm not mm-hmm. saying, oh, I pay taxes. I need. I don't have that bullshit entitlement mentality. No. Right. But can we be informed? Like, can someone let us know what's up? Where's the money going? Like, right. to me, like, and, and, and as a citizen, what mm-hmm. can I contribute? Well, and I think, too, like, even with that, to your point about being informed, is a conversation has to be had. Like, you have to be able to have a conversation. And even more so, it starts with leadership. I can say that I taught in multiple districts. I was at more than one campus. And so much really does begin with the leadership. And when I say leadership, it's the leadership in the classroom. It's the leadership on the campus. And then it's the leadership over the district. So understanding the ins and outs, I can tell you right now that's quite cumbersome. But I do know at least where we are. And in most districts, the school board meets and parents, the community can come in. You can ask questions. Most campuses have where you you can set up a time to meet with the teacher. You can ask the principal. So again, the information, I think maybe it's a more looking for an easier flow of the information and being able to get that information out. But it's definitely there. It's like, how do you access the information? And again, I say it starts with leadership, whether it's in business. And I talk about that in my book with I Quit. Like everything starts with what you believe and with leadership. So you may have someone in leadership that believes it doesn't matter what this building looks like. Kids are going to learn. But we know from studies and from research, the environment does matter. So again, Maybe they are receiving those resources, but do they have leadership that really knows where to put it that's going to be the most efficient and the most effective? And when I begin, after I left the classroom and I began to go out and train educators and train administration, before we ever talked about exactly what is the curriculum, we had to address mindset. Like, what is the mindset? Just because we've always, it's always been done this way does not mean that it has to keep being done that way. How can we be innovative? How can we be cutting edge? And so that can still happen in education, but it starts with what you believe and definitely it's going to begin with leadership. And I tell you, as funny as it may sound, you may have a district, especially a large district, it can have 10 campuses. And every single campus seems like a completely different environment in one district. Oh, and so totally. That's why I, Listen, totally. Within about, I would, if I had to guess, I would say three to four miles. There's another high school that's mm-hmm. on that side, closer to where I live. And this is closer mm-hmm. to where I work. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you, you walk in. Oh, you better believe it. They got a brand new paint. Oh, yeah. those parents... Those those rich folks, oh, you mm-hmm. you better believe it. They let the teachers know, they let the principals know that that is not how we operate in this neighborhood. So I tell yeah. you, it's 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 yeah. definitely it, it like is. And night. Yes, and too, I think too, like you said again, those parents who want to be informed, like we are very conscientious. I know, especially when you work in what we call Title One school districts or um, school districts that are economically disadvantaged. It, it's not that the parents don't care any less. It's not that the parents don't want to be involved any less than parents that are rich or have this amount of money. It goes back, like you said, to the information and how are you informed. So I can say that, especially in areas where it's impoverished, it's more challenging because a lot of times the parent may not know what to ask. And so especially when I was in the classroom, it made we made it a point to make sure to involve the parents because educating the whole child is not just what happens in the classroom. It's what's being reinforced at home. It's the entire community coming together to raise each one of those each one of those kids. And so. Again, like I say, with I quit, I didn't necessarily use that in the classroom, but I would be like, it does not matter if your mom had difficulty with math. That does not have to be your story. It's okay if you, if your mom didn't graduate from high school or your dad never went to college, 
It starts with you. What do you believe you can do? And then when I'm able to share my story with them where I was a first generation college graduate, went on and somebody has to be the first, but oftentimes we just need to be transparent to be able to share that, to be able to really share, hey, I'm more than just your teacher standing up here giving you this information. And when we share those stories with the kids, the kids in turn go home and share it with their parents and it makes us seem more human and more approachable and not this facade of don't go to the school. It's like, no, come on up here. <laughs> we all need to work together. So <laughs> Love it, love it. So listen, um, how do people find you? People can find me across social media at Rachel B. Foy. They can go to my website, rachelbfoy.com. Um, they can definitely pick up more of this inspiring information in my book, I Quit, The How-To Guide of Letting Go of Everything That's Holding You Back in Life. And they can get that at Amazon, but they can find me across all social media, rachelbfoy.com. Listen, I want to thank you so much. I, I, I forgot to mention, my sister is in Houston. She's at MD Anderson, so I don't know how far you're off from that. She's, she's, that's she's not far. Go. That's about 45 minutes. That's not far. Yes, yeah, she's, she's, she's not far. So Houston is all cool. I like Houston. It's all yes. cool. So listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule, being with us. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more. Definitely stay safe, and, and, and we'll, do, we'll do a few other conversations around the whole entire education system. I am not done with you. This whole education thing, we're, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're bring gonna me figure back. this thing out. Yeah, bring me back. We're going to work together. We can get it right. We can get it worked out, Fahid. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. You got it. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.